Hello everybody, this is Flowey from the Free Cat Academy and today we want to talk about a great cat tool that I've been using more and more during the last weeks and months. Today I want to give you a few points why you should absolutely check out this product if you haven't heard of it before. Then we are going to create a complete tutorial in Onshape that you can create along with me and take your first steps in Onshape. So why do I suggest with my 13 or 14 years of CAD experience now, why do I suggest Onshape? So Onshape is cloud native. That means you don't have to worry about installations, downloads, licensing, updates, service packs and all that stuff. Onshape is cloud native and built for business. So it will run in your web browser and you will be able to use CAD in your web browser from any device with a web browser without installation. So on your Linux computer, on my iMac or MacBook, you can use Onshape from everywhere and access all your Onshape documents that you have, okay? So you don't have to worry about files and file systems uh, downloading files, uploading files, all these terrible things that really, really make your workflow so hard. You don't have to worry about it ever again with Onshape. So who created Onshape? So where does Onshape come from? Onshape was created by the founders of SolidWorks. SolidWorks is probably the most famous or the most well-known uh, CAD software. And the founders who also created SolidWorks then they decided and saw that uh, modern engineering teams still have a lot of challenges related to CAD systems and PDM systems with file management of CAD data. And so they decided this is not the future. We want to build a CAD system for the future. And then they designed Onshape. If you go to their website, onshape.com, um, there are a lot more reasons why you should trust Onshape, cloud native, robust collaboration, uh, lower cost, the built-in PDM product data management that's built into Onshape. You don't have to use another software for your data management, agile product development, and so on. Um, a little bit more about the product. If you want to know what's new, you can click on product, view all, what's new, and you will see that Onshape is updated every three weeks so you get updates on Onshape every three weeks and you have nice videos and text articles here to see what's new in Onshape you get great tutorials what the new functions are and how to implement them and the best thing is no need of downloading updates service packs and stuff like that just in your browser Onshape will always run at the current version so if I sign into Onshape you will see that here is my user hub and you see the last documents that I used. Let's click this document down here and you will see that this is just one document that contains all the information. So you have, um, this was my first design study that I created in a so-called part studio down here. Then I started the new design and I created all those single parts and then I assembled the whole thing together here. Everything is in one document, no need to fumble around with files and stuff. The latest thing that I was building is this ashtray here. That's the exercise that we are going to do later in the video. And as you see, we have a GitHub inspired version and branch merge model so that in one document we can have various versions. I click to the version and history tree and I go back to the main branch. And you see that was my actual ashtray that I built. And for the purpose of rendering, so 3D rendering, creating photorealistic images of my ashtray, I started another branch here, the render branch. And now you can see in the render branch, I included these little 0.5 millimeter fillets on every corner because corners in the reality are never razor sharp. So for photorealistic rendering 
it's always suggested to have these little fillets. As for manufacturing, this is not something you want for the manufacturing or creating technical drawing. You better have like these sharp edges. So it's very, very useful to have this little version and history. And also what I just told you, the render studio is also included in Onshape. So if you want to create photorealistic renderings for a product catalog or something, we can do this in Onshape as well. So no need for extra software for rendering and stuff like that. This is all built in Onshape. And as you can see, we can change materials here. So let's create some plastic material. Oh, why not? I haven't tried this yet. The 3D print thermoplastics. Let's see how it looks. Might be interesting. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. So that's just material change. And now we have it displayed as, as if it was 3D printed plastic. Very cool. I like that. I really like that display here, especially here in the details where you really can see the layers from the 3D printer. This looks really, really realistic. So this is just a little bit playing around from me in Onshape, some of the cool features. And um, yeah, I absolutely recommend to check this one out. You should absolutely do it. I will show you the link here in the video where you can try out Onshape for free and check if this cat and PDM software is something for you. And for today's uh, video, I choose to create this little exercise here, the ashtray. This exercise is taken from my YouTube buddy, Too Tall Toby. I absolutely recommend you check his video out. It's the cat modeling challenge on shape SolidWorks Fusion ashtray from Too Tall Toby. Please click on his account, subscribe his account, and leave a nice comment for delivering these great exercises. So, and now what I just told you, create this part absolutely from scratch, from a new document, and you can go and create it along with me. And then you can decide, is it a cool workflow? Is this workflow for me? And I absolutely recommend you check out Onshape now. We start here in the main menu by creating a new document. We click on create document. We need the document name, AT for ashtray one. We click on create and now we have a new document where we can have a fresh start for our exercise. The first thing we need to do is to create a sketch on this front plane here. So we click on sketch, select the front plane, right mouse button click into the blank space and just say view normal to sketch plane. The next thing is to use a line, draw the line from the sketch's origin point a little bit to the left, make a mouse click and then before we make the next mouse click you see that on shape suggests you to create another straight line. We don't want to create another straight line, we want to create an arc. So we have to go a little bit back to the last point we created and then you see the symbol is changing. And now Onshape lets us create an arc. Arc, another straight line, another straight line. Then let's see that we catch this geometric constraint that the next point is always horizontally attached to this point here, like that. Go back to the Z axis, go back down. And now you see that the area here gets a little darker shade. That means that we have here a closed loop sketch, which is very handy. So next thing, dimensions between here and the origin point 130. Total height of our geometry is 60. The wall thickness here is 18. The distance between here and the sketch's origin is also 18. And the radius here is 130 millimeters. So like this, complete sketch turns black, means that the sketch is fully defined and now can be used for the revolve command. We start the revolve, we select the sketch, we have to select the revolve axis, we can select this line for instance and click on this check mark so that we create this 
Base geometry, very, very nice. Okay, next thing we want to do, we want to hide all these planes here because uh, it's a little bit uh, chaotic for me. I don't like that. So I press P like Paul on your keyboard, P, and we hide the planes. Okay, click sketch, click this face here, click view normal to sketch plane, as I told you before, select the center point rectangle, catch the sketches origin point here again and create a nice rectangle. Then we select the equal constraint between the horizontal and vertical line here in the rectangle and then we go for sketch fillet and fillet all the edges of the rectangle with 20 millimeters. The same here, like this, same here, like this and the same here like this. So we get a nice rectangle with rounded edges. We have to create the dimension between these two lines of 80 millimeters. And as you see, we no longer have the equal constraint in place, but we can reset it, just equal this and this line. And we get a perfectly fully defined sketch we can close the sketch and we can continue creating. We click on extrude, select this shape and extrude it up 100 millimeters. And then we will see, oh no, it's a little bit too high. Um, why is that the case? Because we have the um, floor of the ashtray being 18 millimeters and then from the floor, another 100 millimeters. So it has, in, it has to be 100 millimeters minus the 18 millimeters. So yeah, let's leave the math to um, on shape, 82 millimeters perfectly. So this is looking very good, right? So next thing we need to do, create another sketch on this surface area here. We are creating the offset. This complete shape has to be offset to the inside, um, 10 millimeters. Yep, very good. And before we do anything else, we select another sketch to the bottom here, because as we see in the technical drawing, um, it's indicated that the cutout on the top and on the bottom are exactly the same. So we will use the use or project command and project this sketch also on the bottom of the geometry. And now these two sketches can be used to extrude, remove 20 millimeters, Okay, and the same down here, extrude here, remove 65 millimeters. And I hope we have made the right calculation in the technical drawing. We see there is a um, vertical distance, so a distance in Z direction between this face and this face here of 15 millimeters. Is that correct? Let's find it out. We click on the measure details, we select this face, we select this face, and then we get here Z distance 15 millimeters. So our calculations were correct. Very nice. Okay, next thing we want to do is to create the fillets. So click on fillet, click this edge. It has a fillet of 14 millimeters. Click on fillet, select this edge. This has five millimeters and then we also select this face here, fill it this face, also five millimeters. And on the top here, it's nine millimeters here. So nine millimeters like that. Okay. So the next thing we want to add is the cutouts here on the outside edge of the ashtray, the place where you would normally place your cigarettes into. And to create that, we create first a new plane on this circular surface here, face of revolve one. And the next thing we want to make sure is that we have access to this um, edge down uh, up here. So we unhide the sketch one. Now we have access to it. As you see here, we can select the vertices and lines from the sketch one. We create a new sketch on plane one, and then we click on use or project, and we just project this point into the sketch. Now it's here, and now it is accessible for us for our further sketch creation. So, okay, 
we create a center point rectangle going from this point like this and the next thing is a three point arc between these two points going um, into oh I made a mistake you see this is not so nice but we can repair it this and this coincident okay uh, next thing we need to do is to create a dimension between this vertex and here the arc and the radius or the diameter so 22 okay looks pretty good click on extrude extrude the whole geometry remove not blind but up to face let's remove it on until we hit this face here okay next thing is to create a circular pattern means pattern circular pattern of a feature feature pattern features the pattern x through four axis of pattern let's create a new axis right here in the middle of the part four instances 360 degrees yeah looks good okay uh, shift p hides all your construction geometry all the sketches all the planes everything that might distract you and now we have the complete geometry last thing we need to do is to check for its mass properties if we have uh, constructed everything correctly um i can rename this one here ashtray uh, i can give it a nice uh, color edit appearance let's make it this light nice green color here and then we create uh, material assign material um, the material too tall Toby is using for this exercise is not present as as far as I I've seen here in the on shape material library we have to make a custom uh, material so we call it Toby's Toby's ABS with a density of 1.02 times 10 to the power of minus 6 that's just a calculation to come from kilogram per cubic meter to kilogram per um, cubic millimeter. So like this. Okay, let's check the mass properties of this part. 1.481 kilogram. And that's correct. Check the video description for more details on Onshape, on more details on how to support me and my YouTube channel. Yeah, I hope you had a great time following me creating this little exercise with you. Um, wish you all a great time and see you in the next video.